Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. Today, we are happy to introduce... Kim Smith from Curves with Confidence and Kim is a qualified life coach and she's been practicing for 10 years so she's experienced and she recently started Curves with Confidence and that helps mainly women and girls learn to love who they are and I'm going to let Kim explain more than that but yeah, if you are struggling with self-love or body love issues or just issues in general, Kim's a really good person to talk to. So without further ado, I'm just going to let Kim go for it. Welcome, Kim. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's really exciting. I'm happy to be on and, and sharing my message to whoever needs to hear it. Um, that's what it's all about, isn't it? That's why we put ourselves out there, uh, is to help others. So, yeah, it thank is. you. Thank Absolutely. you. Right. Okay. So, I mean, I've known you for a little while now. About four years, I think. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, yeah. where's the time go? But um, and I knew you as a life coach. Um, but Curse with Confidence is quite a new thing. A yes. fairly new thing the last year or so. Is that right? Not even. Oh, not even. really? Yeah. yeah. How did that come about? How did Curse with Confidence grow out of what you were already doing with your clients? So, um, I, as, as, as you said, I've been coaching for, for over 10 years now and predominantly finding that most of my lady clients, I, I say ladies, but also girls, I've had, you know, girls and, and women, that when they come to see me, one of the main areas that they struggle with is loving who they are. I mean, don't get me wrong, men have the same issue, but I predominantly found that it was the ladies that really struggled to love who they are and to love the skin they're in. Uh, you know, we all different shapes and sizes, and as long as you fit and healthy, it shouldn't matter what you look like. And let's face it, it doesn't matter what you look like. When you are confident, you are beautiful. And that confidence shines through and makes you look even more beautiful. And I, after, you know, I do obviously still do coaching, but this um, Curves with Confidence came to me sort of just out of the blue. I've been wanting to focus and start a group, particularly for girls and women, but just didn't quite know how to get it going. And, you know, it was sort of just a thought in the back of my mind. And walking into the supermarket, as you do, this yeah. light bulb moment came up and um, the thought of curves with confidence came to my head. And I thought, oh, I really like the, the ring off that. That sounds mm. really good. And the more I looked into it and the more I sort of played with it and, and thought about it, uh, the clearer the message came through that, you know, there's more people out there that need a bit of help to love who they are, to love the skin you're in. I've always been a curvy girl. I um, exercise every day. I watch my diet. I'm really fit and healthy, but I'm not a skinny girl. And growing up, and even now today, you know, uh, it's unfortunate that the media has played a huge part in how women view themselves. And skinny and slim is beautiful. And the curvy girls, you know, it, it not as beautiful. Yes, things are changing slowly um, now with the introduction of curvy girls really, you know, using their voice and um, showing that actually you can be healthy and fit and still curvy. Everybody's shape is different. So that's really where it came about. And it sort of just started growing from there, uh, you know, just helping more and more people to love the skin they're in. 
because the more you love who you are, the more love you have to give to others. And isn't that why we're yeah. here? You know, we're here to help each other. So yeah, that's where the sort of story began. Yeah. I mean, I suppose at the moment, just thinking about while we're recording this, so this will be released a little bit after the recording, but recording, we're just about to go into level two of yes. our COVID lockdown. And the whole story behind that is be kind. Yes. It's kindness. Yes. And another aspect, so it prompted a couple of examples of where we align is my philosophy with my fitness training. So if those of you who don't know, I'm a personal trainer and I run boot camps at the moment in Browns Bay. And the goal of our boot camp is community and having people being able to improve their fitness and strength and capability rather than focusing on a number on the scale or a mm. size. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I love, I love that. And there are so many people who do, they comment or they message or even family and friends talk about how they hate a part of their body or how they hate their belly or their, their mm. bum or they just hate something. And it's, it's heartbreaking to hear so many people talk about how much they re hate themselves. Yeah. Yeah, you know, having something like this is just so important. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, it, it's, it is. It's heartbreaking, and and it's younger and younger girls that are looking in the mirror and just not loving who they are. You know, not seeing their heart. You know, focusing on the bum, focusing on the cellulite, focusing on. You know, I've got big boobs. I've got big lips, and I've got a big bum. You know, and it's taken <laughs> me a long, long time to look in the mirror and love what I see. Mm. And even, even, even today, you know, I have a few, well, not today, but I have moments where I look in the mirror and the first thing I focus on is what's wrong, what's not perfect, you know, because we've been told, well, this is what perfect looks like. Mm, and and who, who, who is perfect? Nobody's perfect, you know, and, and how boring would life be if, everybody was perfect and everybody looked the same. It's your personality. It's your confidence. It's who you are that makes you beautiful because your body can change, you know, love the skin you're in because it can change and it will change as you age. And which is what I've noticed is as I'm aging gracefully, <laughs> I'm noticing how my curves are changing a bit. You know, and it's, it's learning to love those changes because there are so many people that don't have that opportunity to love who they are. You know, they're either ill or they're um, fighting for their lives or they've lost their lives. And it's just truly embracing all that makes you who you are. And it starts from loving you first. And... Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's something that I've been called to do and I'm extremely, extremely passionate about because of the journey that I've been on, where it's taken me so long to, to love who I am. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking um, as, we, as we go into this and a, a lot of people, I have a feeling a lot of people might be going, oh, that's great, Kim. It's all very noble. But how how do i start loving myself when i've got this big bum big thighs my teeth are crooked what whatever yeah yeah how yeah. how do i even start that journey good question it's it starts with how you speak to yourself i used to constantly down myself i used to speak to myself worse than i would allow anybody else to speak to my, to me yeah. and I'd, I'd speak to myself worse than i would ever 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 speak to anybody else so that's really, you know, a small thing that you can start doing, but is so, so powerful is how you speak to yourself. Stop downing yourself. When you look in the mirror, don't just focus on the things you don't like. Look at the things that are great. Look at the things that you have that maybe somebody else doesn't have. Mm -hmm. And rather than looking into the mirror or looking at yourself and speaking to yourself and calling yourself names, stop it. I had to learn to stop that from a very well, early on in my career, I had to learn to stop that negative self-talk. Yeah. I'd call myself, oh, you, oh, don't be a dumbass, or don't be stupid. Oh, that was so stupid. 
you know, and, and how often do we say that to ourselves? But would I say that to anybody else? No, never. So yet no, we think it's you okay. Say that's your best friend? Exactly. You wouldn't have any if you spoke to them. No. <laughs> so, you know, it's starting with how you're speaking to yourself first and picking up that negative talk and just cutting it off, apologizing and changing it to, oh, you can do better next time. Mm. Oh, that's something we can work on rather than oh, calling yourself names that you'd never call anybody else, let alone yourself. And that really was a sort of pivotal turning point for me in my journey when I stopped my negative self-talk. Mm. So would you say, say somebody is maybe hopping out of the shower or they're just about to get into the shower and they're, they're seeing themselves in the mirror and that might be the only mirror in the house. They might even only have that much of a mirror so they can yeah. see their face and do their makeup um but say they do have a full body mirror and they walk by and they go oh because they've just caught yeah. themselves on a funny angle how how do we catch that when it's so ingrained how do we catch that and go oh wait pick some pick something i love okay my eyes are okay i like <laughs> they're okay and then you carry on about your day but yeah how how do we kind of start flipping that switch yeah, and that's something that I had to do as well. Just, you know, and, and even now, I've still got to catch myself every now and again, you know, focusing on the things that I don't like. Mm -hmm. And some days it's, oh, you've got great eyes. Love your smile, girl. Yeah. You know, so I've started looking at myself and as soon as I feel a negative thought or I, or I say something negative to myself, I flip the switch and I say, oh, you've yeah. got beautiful eyes, or I love your smile, or you've got this girl, we're working on this, L -l -l I've got, you know, look at my energy, or um, I'm a loving, kind person. You know, there's a lot of things that we can change it. It doesn't have to be about necessarily the looks to begin with, you mm -hmm. know, but it did, I had to start looking at the, in the mirror and focusing on the bits that I do like, even if it's, oh, I've got great hands, or... I'm, I'm strong and capable, you know, it's, um, it's little things like that, that really start turning things around for you. And, mm -hmm. you know, we so, we so often look in the mirror, focusing on all the negative bits, completely hiding the fact that you've got beautiful arms or you've got, you know, beautiful smile, or you've got great hair, you know, beautiful lips, whatever it is, that's what we need to focus on. Because the more we focus on that, the more we'll find to love ourselves about. And then we'll give ourselves more time to work on the bits that we don't like. Because it's all very well saying, oh, well, I hate my big bum, but I'm going to sit on my bum and eat two bars of chocolate and um, moan about it rather than doing something about it. You know? Yes. So, mm. Yes. Which um, I'm just going to put a pause in there because I want to touch on the kind of the extreme aspects of the body positivity, health at every size type movement that sometimes almost, I'm going to be very careful about what I mm. say, but mm. um, it almost seems like a lot of that positivity and that movement is yes, I love my body, so I don't need to change it. Yeah, yeah. And then there's, there's the flip side of, well, I want to improve my body. I might not like my legs. I think my legs are too skinny. They should be more shapely or something like that. Yeah. Rather than going, I love my legs as they are, and that's it. I'm never going to do squats or whatever. Yeah. I'm just going to do it. That I should, okay, maybe if I want to improve them, yes, they're great. This, yes, they help me stand this. They do this. They fit in my jeans. Well, but I want to, them to look better. I will do this. And what's, how do we go from loving and accepting our body, recognizing things we want to improve and improving them without knocking any part of that process? Yeah. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's all about being health, healthy and fit, fit mm. and healthy. And if you eat a healthy diet, 
99% of the time and you have chocolate on the 1%, which I love my chocolate. I love Whitakers. I, you know, it's all about balance. For me, it's all about balance. I'm not yeah. going to have Whitakers every single day, but possibly maybe once a week, I will have some chocolate. All about that balance. Because if what we're doing is saying, well, I need to get skinnier, so I'm never going to eat chocolate again, or I'm not going to, then what, what we naturally want to do is just have as much chocolate as we can. Mm. And it's the same with exercise. You know, you've got to have a balance. So you're not over-exercising or you're looking at it in a negative way. It's got to be a, ch a change of life, really. Mm. So that a healthy diet, drinking enough water, a positive mindset and exercise is just part of who you are. It's not necessarily about losing weight or getting skinnier thighs or getting a, a firmer bottom. It's mm -hmm. about doing the exercise on a regular basis, eating the healthy meals on a regular basis, making those life changes so that it becomes a normal part of your routine. It's a good natural habit to have rather than a focus on, well, I'm doing this to lose weight or I'm doing this to get skinny because what happens is if you're doing this to lose weight okay once you lose weight then what yes what happens if you still don't like what you see in the mirror but you lose weight or yes. you okay you've lost weight but you've also lost health yeah and our health is our wealth you know we know what it's like I've put up a few posts recently about you know your health is your wealth and how tough it is um, when you are trying to le lead a normal life and you're not feeling well or you're ill or you're mm. struggling with sickness. So it's a mindset of, well, I'm going to change my habits and form healthy habits that can support me so that when I look in the mirror, I know I'm doing what I can to help support my body, to help support my mind, to help support my spirit, because it's all interconnected. Once we feel um, stronger and we know we're doing more for ourselves, we increase our confidence yes. because we're doing something about it. Yes. And that then increases the blood flow to the brain. So we feel better. They reckon that the more regular you exercise, the better mind frame you have. They reckon exercise is the best form of um, natural antidepressant you can get. And I truly believe that, truly. I mean, without my exercise, my daily exercise routine, you know, we've been through some, some doozy of challenges throughout our lives. And if it wasn't for my, my exercise, I would have been on um, what I call happy pools, you know, for most of my life. And my mum struggled with um, clinical depression mm. for a long time in her life. So I know it's something that I have to be mindful of. So it's, it's, what you're focusing on yeah. not necessarily just the outcome it's the change of life the life skills that you are doing for yourself because it's going to help all areas of your life yeah. i hope i explained it yes I'm yes so there. what i'm taking from that it's having not so much not so much of like an unconditional love as much as an appreciation for your body and what you can do and what it can do. And going back to my training, what I do with my clients is about capability yeah. rather than a number on the scale. Yeah. And so health at every size is what are you doing? That's the best for your body right now. Yeah. And crash dieting is not one of those things. No, no. There's a reason why it's called crash dieting. Yeah. yeah. Because you, because you <laughs> crash, end up crashing. Yep. you end up crashing. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and making incremental steps to fuel your body, to nourish your body, to nourish your brain and to nourish the journey in the world around you. That's right. Yep. hundred percent. Yeah. Perfect. So that, that solves that done. <laughs> Cause it is tricky because we're talking about curves with confidence and as a skinny mini for want of a better phrase 
it's hard to put myself in those shoes mm. when I am training people because they go, Oh, what do you know? You, you're just so skinny anyway. Yes. But it's my issue has always been about making sure I don't look frail, making sure I'm healthy and That's right. fueled in that way. That's right. Rather than That's just being right. the lanky yes. muppet. You know, and, and, and the thing is too, curves with confidence doesn't necessarily just mean for curvy women. Mm. It's loving the skin you're in. I've got a lot of friends that struggle to put on weight. Yeah. So they do have to be careful that they don't look too skinny mm. or ill or emancipated because that's an issue that people have too. You know, so you're either too skinny or you're too curvy. But yeah. it's, it's that health aspect. It's making yourself health, fit and strong. And that... By doing that for yourself, I call it my me time, non-negotiable, me time every day. And when I was working, I, at one point I had to drop my husband off at, at um, work and I had to get up at five o'clock. Well, I, I enjoy getting up at five because then there's no interruptions. And when my children were younger, that was the only time I really had for myself. So I'd get up at five o'clock and make sure that I did my me time from five to six or five to six thirty, whatever time I had. Yeah. And when I was dropping my husband off, I was getting up at quarter to five to make sure that I could do that because I had to drop him off earlier than when I needed to go to work. So it's just making those alterations in your day to make sure that you find time for yourself, whether it's half an hour, whether it's an hour, whatever it is, you need to have that me time. And in that me time, I do my exercise, I meditate, I do what's called EFT tapping, I do some journaling, I pray, I just get my energy right for the day. And mm. what I know if I've missed that me time, after a day or two, I can, I can start feeling, I'm feeling sluggish, my energy is a bit off. Things that don't normally annoy me start annoying me. I'm starting to look in the mirror and I'm starting to go, <laughs> you know, because I know, okay, I haven't given myself time. And yeah. particularly as women, we tend to give so much of our time to everybody else. It's give, 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 give. And I used to be well on the low, bottom of my list when, you know, before I started coaching. Mm. And I've really had to work on, okay, understanding that I'm not being selfish. I'm actually doing everybody a favor because when I'm giving myself my me time and I'm exercising and I'm doing all these things for me, I have more energy. I am calmer. I am more fun to be around. I can deal with whatever dramas are coming up in a calm, cool, peaceful way rather than completely losing it yes. and, you know, making it so much more difficult. So it's just, making sure that you are making time for yourself and including in that time some exercise. There's so many different platforms out there that help women and girls, people, to exercise. And you being one of them, Amy, you know, where it's now mm -hmm. online. Yes, we've all been stuck at home, but I've coming out of this fitter than I ever have been because um, you know, I've had that extra time. So whereas before I might only have had half an hour, maybe an hour, I've had been able to extend it for two hours. So it's just making sure you're doing what you can in the time you have, but making sure that you make that time for yourself. Yeah. You know, so it's almost like um, if you've got a doctor's appointment, well, you're not going to change that. It's a doctor's appointment. You make that time, yeah. You make that time in your diary every day, I'm looking at my diary right now, me time, you know, that's yes. what I'm making for myself. And it's made a world of difference in my life. So mm, I like that. Yeah. Booking an appointment with yourself. Yeah. 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 Often we think, oh, we're being selfish, but actually, no, we're not. It's, it's complete opposite. You have to put yourself first so that you can give to others more. It's exactly yeah. the, my, my whole point is, you know, you have to love who you are. So that you can love others more, so that you've got that capacity to love and understand and have compassion and all that. But if you're kind of giving from an empty cup, it's really, really hard to have the energy, the time, 
and the love to give to whoever it is that needs it. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that um, empty cup because somebody else, it's been a recurring theme in the interviews that I've been having and there was one, oh, I can't remember who it was I spoke to. I think it was a lady before and she said, so you've got, you can't pour from an empty cup, but that cup, that full cup is yours. All of that. You've got to fill that cup and have it overflowing before you can yeah. give the excess. Yeah. Was that you? No, no, no but that you. sounds that very much like what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was one of my podcast interviews before and forgive me for forgetting who it was, but yeah. That's so I true. I thought that. You and you know, it's, it's, empty it's, cup, but yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. And it's, our, our cups are so often filled with little holes, you know, because we're giving our mm -hmm. time to everybody else. And we don't think of, well, we've got to keep filling that cup because the holes are just going to keep getting bigger. You turn into a colander. Exactly. So you've got to keep filling your cup. And that's why daily me time is, you know, just, it's, it's not even a question. My, my family knows, okay, mom's doing her me time. You know, not that they normally up when I'm doing my me time, but today I did it a bit later because I could, you know. So it's just making time. to Be a bit flexible if you need to, to make sure that you put that time in. Even if it means going into the bathroom and closing the door, locking it, and just having some me time in the bathroom. If that, you know, if you've got little kids, I know it's tricky. So... But yeah, they're, when they're going, mom, 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 yes, yes, mom, yeah. mom no, I'm in the mood, just yeah. leave me for now. But honestly, it, it, it just, it's made a world of difference to myself and my clients, you know, making that time for themselves, filling your cup, because you've got to fill from your cup. You can't pour from an empty one. Mm. Mm. So you've mentioned a couple of tips so far, like making the appointment with yourself, which is a good long-term habit to get into, um, finding... A space for you even if it's hiding in the bathroom sitting on the edge of the bath um, what are some quick I don't want to say quick fixes but um, quick quick short quick tips quick short time frame um, things that people can do like a little five minute exercise that people can do okay to kind of yep. help them get into a, a more relaxed headspace or positive right. headspace Perfect. Um, so there's a few things. Um, so EFT tapping is where you tap on your energy meridians. And oh, yeah. that can take two minutes. And all it does is you, if you, if you Google search EF, EFT tapping, mm -hmm. and all you do is you, you go through, okay, um, I'm feeling so frustrated. I'm so angry. Um, my child is just messed all over the floor. And I'm about to scream. I'm so frustrated. I feel so unsupported and unappreciated. And I have no time for myself. And then you take a deep breath. And another breath in. And you just let it out. Let the frustration out. And then you carry on with, I'm an amazing person. I'm capable. I'm loved. I'm strong. I'm appreciated. I have everything I need. I'm loved. I love myself. I love my family. And I've got this. And, and already you'll start feeling a bit of a sense of relief. That was obviously a very, very fast whiz through. But yeah. that's the sort is that of kind of the so certain places in that order? Oh, yes. It? So it is. It's all in order. So you start with your forage. Yeah. And then you start with your, go through to your temple, under your eyes, under your nose, on your chin, your curves, under your arm, top of your head, and then corner your side of your hand and it's just it's the energy points on the body that release energy so if you've got this start off with whatever's 
upset you. Maybe you've had a fight with your partner. Maybe the kids are driving you mad. Maybe you're feeling frustrated with your business or financial, whatever's going on. Just let it all out because mm. you can't all be good all the time. You can't, it, you cannot ignore the negativity. You have to deal with it. Otherwise it's going to bottle up and explode. Yes. Can you just say that again? I heard what? you, but it needs, it needs reiterating. Okay. You cannot ignore the negative you have to deal with it otherwise it will bottle up and explode you have to deal with the yin and the yang you have to deal with the negative in order for more positive to come through we are so often ignoring the negative not trying to deal with it don't want to deal with it just shove it in the backpack and hope it goes away but it doesn't it builds up and then it over explodes because your partner maybe didn't do the kitchen the dishes or the kitchen's a mess and that's not really what's upset you there's a whole lot of other things that have done that so this is a very quick way of getting rid of that energy another way is just a few deep breaths in and a few deep breaths out so you four deep breaths in and over eight deep breaths out so you go in one two three four and then you release one two three four five six seven eight and you do that a few times and that's another way of really calming your energy if you are feeling exceptionally frustrated and stressed out have a good scream mm. does amazing either into the pillow if you don't want to freak the neighbors out or I find, and a lot of my clients have come back to me saying, oh my gosh, I felt so much better. A good scream in the car, if you're alone. <laughs> Don't yeah. have a good scream, you've got the kids at the back of you. Because <laughs> they'll probably start crying or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you're on your own in the car, a good scream just releases that pent-up energy. Yeah. Another good tip is to just go for a walk in nature. I love going for walks on the beach or in a park or bush walks. So anything in nature also just, it just cleanses that energy, you know, because we have so much coming onto us. So much is sort of coming to us and very often it's a lot of negative energy and that sort of seems to stick on us if we don't release it. So I do um, meditating um, for 20 minutes every day, which is just calming your mind. A lot of people find, think, oh, meditating, I can't do it, I can't do it. Well, it's really just focusing on your breathing. Yeah. So calming your mind. And it's a great way to start your day because you're starting your day grateful and calm and then tapping. So whatever's sort of been going on in my mind or in my head, I just tap and release that. And, um, and then follow on with, you know, I'm capable and I'm supported and I'm loved and whatever. And that really does, you know, there's a few tricks that you, you can do that don't, don't take time at all. I mean, I, um, when my coach says, you know, if you need to, meditate on the toilet. So, mm. <laughs> you know, we, we, often you see people sort of in Zen and they're sort of sitting in a beautiful garden or whatever. But you can't always get to that. And then a lot of people put that off because, yeah. well, I don't have the time. But you, you've got to go to the toilet, you know. So make that your time, you know, to meditate if you're wanting to. But there's these little things that you can do throughout your day that just helps center you, helps cleanse energy, and just helps you feel better about yourself. Mm. What are your thoughts on, you said getting out into nature, what are your thoughts on grounding and getting barefoot? In oh. nature? imperative i do that every day um as soon as my feet hit the floor uh, well actually as soon as my eyes open i start off with a grateful heart so i'm just thankful for another day because not everybody gets that mm. and when you start your day in gratitude it's really hard to have a shitty day you know so i start my day and as i go on my day um i'm grateful for the water in my tap i'm grateful for the power in my 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 switches and for the plumbing and all that so you start off with the gratitude of all the little things that you don't normally see and then either in the shower or if you're going for a walk just ask for a bit of grounding you know grounding to the earth to keep mm. you grounded to help with your energy help to stabilize your energy um i ask for grounding as soon as my feet hit the floor in the morning as i just ask to be grounded and then yeah. in the shower, I just ask to be cleansed. Just 
it cleans my energy just to get my blood flowing. And I end up in my shower. I know not everybody's going to like this, but I end my shower with a cold burst. So I stand under cold water for about a minute. Yes. <laughs> um, a bit I trickier in yet. winter. <laughs> it's very <laughs> tricky in winter. <laughs> but um, it's definitely, it just helps wake the, your cells up. It just helps cleanse your energy. And it really does get you buzzing on a on a good note so all those little tips and tricks and you know it doesn't take much it just starts you, you start sort of changing the way your mind thinks and starts you on a good positive note in the morning that will help you throughout your day yeah and um so that's a lot of tips for people <laughs> to try is there any one thing that you'd recommend to start with over anything else if if they wanted to get going and all of that seems a bit much what would yeah you recommend to start um or is everyone different everybody's different so i mean the easiest way is to is to start with um probably the eft tapping mm -hmm. because it takes a few minutes and it really does allow you to release that negative emotion and negative energy and replace that with the positive calming soothing positive energy so if if all else try the eft tapping and then the gratitude you know um that just changes the way your brain's thinking and it really does help so when you start looking in that mirror you start you you're looking at it in a grateful context rather than you know frustrated well i'm not feeling like i want to i'm not looking like i'm wanting to and i'm not liking what i'm seeing and it sort of slowly starts changing your brain into seeing things in a different way and then you're more than likely to want to exercise wanting to eat healthy wanting to drink more water herbal teas to support yourself and look after yourself because hey there's only one of you and we're all unique and we're all here for a purpose so you know you've got to start looking after you because you are important it's Im imperative yes yes um now where to go from here so we've done little short tips i'm guessing i was thinking about long-term gains but piling on those short things those little things that you can do every day build into long habits like yeah. building up into yeah. a healthy eating plan healthy movement yeah all Absolutely. Of that. so yes and this is all related to how we look and how we perceive ourselves so we are Absolutely. talking a lot about mental tricks that we can do to get into a right headspace but it's again looking at how we perceive things how we perceive ourselves in in with that absolutely it starts with you first okay. you know you are your thoughts you are what you think you become the power of the brain is incredible and yet we don't utilize that power at all in fact we barely think about our brains yet without our brains we're nothing yeah. think about it if you you know if you have a brain injury you lose you you do you can lose yourself you can lose your memories you can lose the recognition of the people you love but we don't we don't even think about that and it's only recently i've been doing a lot of learning and listening to a lot of podcasts during the lockdown and it's only till recently that i've really started appreciating my brain more and all these little things that we do all help support your body, but your brain, most importantly, because it's how we think. If we wake up thinking, oh, it's another day, and oh, it's going to be hard, it's going to be hard. Regardless of what your body's doing, your brain is telling your body it's going to be hard. So it's going to be hard. But if you wake up thinking, okay, I've got this, I'm strong, the day's going to be great. I am powerful and I am with it and I'm onto it. You've more than likely starting the day on a better note, telling yourself that you can do this, your brain's going to comply, your body's going to comply. 
but it does. It starts with us first and loving who you are that comes from your brain. It does. It does. I was just thinking if say somebody had got an injury and they go through rehab and everything to build up that injury. And it's about connecting, reconnecting the brain to say, if you've had a knee operation, reconnecting the brain to the knee and to the leg and to teach everything to move. And it's right. building those connections through the body. Right. It's not just looking at something and going, you're hopeless. I'm hopeless. My knee's hopeless. Everything's, everything's rubbish. Might as well just lie in bed and not do the yeah. rehab because then you never get better. Exactly. And, it's and you can do all the rehab that you want and you can take all the medication that you want. But if you do not believe that mm. you will get better, then you won't get better. The brain is a magnificent tool if we use it properly. People and recovered from back injuries oh, and all sorts, I've, haven't they? I've got a, a friend of mine who has healed herself from brain cancer. I kid you Your not. Brain is amazing. So and and she's been doing everything she can to heal herself. She's still got a lot of cancers around her body that she's busy healing, but they've all reduced. And it's all got to do with how yes, obviously her diet and what mm -hmm. she's doing there, but she's also changed her thoughts. She's changed. She's looking. Um, you know, she's doing meditating. She's doing tapping. She's doing energy. Um, releasing and she's focusing on the positive on the power that she has rather than I'm tired I don't have energy I feel sick because if you focus on that that's what you're going to get more of yes she has down days we're human we're not always going to be up and with it and energized mm. that's okay it's on those down days that you need to give yourself a bit more me time but also realizing that it's okay to have a down day as long as it doesn't move into a down week, a down month, a down year. And then the next thing, your whole life is just rubbish because yeah. that's what you're perceiving. If you think yeah. you can, you can. The power of the brain is incredible. Yeah. And it's going back to, I suppose, appreciation. If you're going, I appreciate the, the treatments that I'm getting and this treatment that I, is going to work because I trust in these doctors that they're going to, do the best they can for me and i know that if i do this it's going to help with here because i know through my studies for exercise there is a j curve with exercise if you're sedentary you're more likely to have a like upper respiratory tract infection yes. if you're sedentary if you exercise and look at your exercise and recovery levels and balance those out then your immune system's pretty strong and you have below yep. average if you push things too far the other way and you're over exercising over that then things go up there and it's just learning how to balance everything balance. but making sure that the you're understanding what you're doing is beneficial rather than going oh yeah no the, i know the doctors they say that this is but no i, I feel like rubbish so it's not going to work for me it's, yeah it's yeah it's all how you perceive the journey perceive it and, and what you do what you're doing yeah and what you do to 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 help that along yeah. i'm asthmatic and i've been Me too. severely asthmatic since i was five years old right. and you know um often having stints in hospital with uh you know bronchitis pneumonia so really severely asthmatic and i can tell you since i started exercising probably my daughter's now 18. So 18 years ago, I sort of got into, okay, no, I'm going to exercise, you know, more regularly and take better care of myself. Yeah. And I have, I, I can, the doctors say that I don't actually need a preventer anymore. And I possibly may only need a preventer maybe in winter, depending on how I'm feeling. I haven't had bronchitis or pneumonia for years. And you know, it's all about that balance. Yes, I've changed mm. my mindset because I believe I'm strong enough. I do the work, I do my me time and I do my exercise because I know it not only strengthens my mind and helps me feel positive so that I will exercise, yeah. but it strengthens my body as well and my lungs. So yes. it's all wrapped up in one. You can't just go, okay, well, I'm going to work on my mind 
and neglect my body yeah. or I'm just going to work on my body and neglect my mind. It's all connected. And what we think and, you know, what we do is all connected to each other. So yeah. mm. I relate completely to the asthma story because I'm the same. I never ended up in hospital, but every winter when I was in the yes. UK, every winter I get bronchitis Yes, and I would always be struggling and I always kind of asked to have a note for PE. Uh, Amy can't do running because she has asthma. Amy can't do, yes. Amy can't get anything that gets her heart rate up because you're, it'll affect her asthma and i always believe no i can't i can't exercise i can't wow and now look at you you're a personal now, trainer I'm a personal trainer <laughs> look at this the more i exercised and got into that yeah i don't even know where my inhaler is i haven't yeah. used it in so long yeah that yeah. it's it's amazing but for the longest time i just believed that it just is what that it is just me it is yeah. what it is yeah I was the same. I was five years old. I ended up having an asthma attack and ended up in hospital. And, yeah. you know, I've had a few episodes of truly fighting for my life, not being able to breathe. And it's terrifying. Mm. And to, to, you know, feel like I was an asthmatic. I'm no longer an asthmatic. Yeah. I do not have to have an asthma pump wherever I go. Is just so inspiring. Mm. And it just shows you the power of the mind when you, you know, you get yourself on a track where you care for yourself enough to make the time for yourself yeah. to look after yourself. Yes. There's no limit. No. I mean, you can, you can cure brain, brain cancer if you've got, you make the time to love who you are. Yes. Right. We're coming to the end. I'm just looking at the time and I'm mindful of, people we could talk forever about, oh, we could. This, about this topic <laughs> but um how would people be able to get hold of you so this is something that you can work with people online, you can do online. yes yes absolutely um you can contact me on contact at kim and john mm -hmm. just by email or you can contact me directly through my facebook page which is curves with confidence by kim smith um, and otherwise I am also doing, I'm looking at doing, um, a pamper day, a ladies and girls pamper day. It was supposed to be sort of June, July, but well, you know, COVID's yes. done a bit of a, <laughs> so, um, watch the space for them, but that's my plan moving forward is to do a girls and ladies pamper day. And then I also offer myself, um, out to schools, to groups, to businesses and, and give free motivational talks um, about loving the skin you're in about you know what you can do to help yourself because yes I was thinking about that do you um what is the earliest age group that you work with um I'd probably say from around 10 yeah yeah um although I've had a few mums bring their daughters um with to some of the talks that I've given and they found it really beneficial mm. so you're never really too young, but I think from yeah. 10 years old is when you start really getting um, more of an into understanding. Your, yeah, you're a bit more understand, and you start sort of judging yourself a bit more um, and mm. start sort of checking other people out and a bit more sort of insecure, start the insecurity starts setting in. Yeah, I suppose it's so, that prepubescence age. Yes, yeah, thing, yeah which is what happened with me. Yeah. yeah, so so probably from around 10. Um, but yeah, so if anybody is wanting, you know, me to come and have a chat to a group or, or um, a business or whatever, a mm. school, let me know, just um, flick me an email and we can start chatting about it. And um, yeah, if you're wanting to discuss more one-on-one -on -one time with me, then um, yeah, just contact me via my email address. Uh, and of course, my, my mobile number, which is 27 Two three one five one one six. Flick me a text or give me a call. And I'll pop all these in the show notes as well if anyone missed that. Um, I just thought of a question, a final question before we round up. Um, what if, say, a mum is listening to this and they are worried about their daughter? Is there anything that they can start doing, whether it's um, demonstrating positive? habits themselves or what can they say to their daughter to kind of help them definitely 
definitely monkey see monkey do yeah so um i've got two beautiful girls and it's definitely uh i i never down myself in front of them i never you know look at myself or or, or tell them i'm on a diet because i'm fat or i'm ugly or whatever the case may be so be very mindful of what it is that you're saying to yourself in front of your your child and if you've done all of that right and your daughter's still or your child is still struggling um it's possibly a good good idea to just have a sit down with them and have a chat about why it is they feeling like they are and start getting them to maybe even do some tapping it's simple anybody can do it you know and it's that positive reinforcement that you are capable and you are loved and you are beautiful and we are all unique it doesn't matter you can't compare yourself to other people because you are unique you are you there's nobody else like you and uh, it's celebrating your uniqueness because the world would be a very boring place if we all look the same so getting that kind of message out um, really can start the ball turning in a different direction mm. yeah yeah we're not a conveyor belt no pumping not. out barbie and ken dolls oh no thank goodness can no. you imagine it'd be very oh. boring <laughs> no. no thank you no thank you um i think that last question probably rounded things up quite well but is there anything else that you want to add before we close I think it's to, to, yeah, I think that the remembering that you're unique and you need to make time for you because you are worth it. And the more you see your self-worth, the more others will start seeing your self-worth too, if they haven't already. And you'll see people start changing how they treat you because of how you treat you. So never be afraid to put yourself first. Me time is imperative and it'll start changing your life fantastic yes i like that you value your self-worth other people will value you absolutely more. yeah that's if i knew that when i was a teenager oh i tell you then the world would be a different oh place. it would have been so much easier road <laughs> yeah it would <laughs> Goodness me. Well, thank you very much for coming on. Um, I'm sure we'll have questions come up and people contacting you or me. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you. Anytime. And I look forward to having you on again. Perfect. Sounds good. Thanks for your time. Amy. Thank you. You take care. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.